Section 8.5, probability. When you go to higher statistics courses, you learn, you learn um, about what we call probability density function. You learn a lot about that. We use it a lot. And what the idea behind this section is to show you even calculus can be used in probability, probability statistics, and specifically integrals. So to do that, let's introduce, let capital X be a continuous, be a continuous random variable. And small f be its probability. Density function. be its probability density function. Then we define the probability of x lying between a and b to be the integral from a to b f of x dx. So if you take if you take the probability density function and integrate it, that will give us the probability over that interval from A to B. So that's the probability of X for X to be between A and B. So a quick example, if they ask you, find the probability of someone's age to fall from 18 to 28 was the probability for someone's age to be from 18 to 28. Whatever answer you get, that's going to, if I want, if I want to construct it graphically, what it means, this is the function f or f of x. And we are going from 18 to 28. So this left hand side, the probability represents the area under the curve, the area under that curve. So the area under the curve to the right side. And that's why, um, so in, in middle school, early high school, the students learn a little bit about statistics. So they learn about something called the empirical rule. The empirical rule said, briefly, the empirical rule said, under this normal curve like that, you know, with that, that's the median in the middle. If you go up by, you don't need to know all these details, but I just want to get to a point. If you go up from the mean, if you go up one standard deviation above the mean and one below the mean, the statistics has shown that 68% of the data falls within one standard deviation from the mean. If you do two standard deviation from the mean, the statistic has shown, I believe, 95%. And then three standard deviation, it's about 99.7%. So these things here, if you put it here, 34%, 34% by symmetry, and then they have numbers here. If you do 95 minus 68, you're going to get percent here, percent, percent, percent. But what happens if you add all these percents, under that normal curve, all the areas, the total area, let me call it total area, is going to sum up to one. One means 100%, which is probability, right? It's one, 100%. So here, what we do is, um, in statistics courses, you learned also how to find the probability, if you take a stat class, uh, someone's age falls between or from 18 to 28. But the way we did it back then, uh, we, did, we took the probability below 28 minus the probability uh, above or, you know, like we did the subtraction. Below 28, below 18, that gives me in the middle. But the way we could do it by using a table. They give you table of values. But here we don't have table of values. That's why we come into calculus. So calculus will tell us. So the table of values when you try to do this, you're going to say, oh, probability of 
28 minus the probability x is less than or equal 18. So when you look on the table, you're going to find these, these values, and then you will, oh, not the 18 and 28, but there's more into it. You have to do to find the z-score, and then from the z-score, you have to use the tables and get into this. That's why calculus will is here to make things easier for us. Okay. So now, do you think all do, do all the functions are considered probability density function? The answer is no. We say in order for in order for a function to be considered as probability density function, it has to satisfy the following conditions. First condition, that f of x must always be bigger than or equal to zero for all x. Graphically means above or touches the x-axis. The second one, the integral when we go from negative infinity to, to infinity of that f of x, dx must equal to one, as I explained in the empirical rule. The area, the total area below the curve must add up to one. And to show you how this works, we have a lovely example. The density function, density function, f of x is given by e negative e to the 3 minus x over 1 plus e 3 minus x all squared is an example of a logistic distribution. We get later on something called the uh, logistic functions. Part A, we need to verify that F is a probability function, like a, a probability density function. And part B, find the probability that x is between or from 3 to 4. So for the first part, how do we verify? We need to verify two things. We need to verify e, f of x is always bigger than or equal to 0. So how do I do this? If you look at the numerator of this, um, this function, this one, this is always bigger than 0 for all x. And if you look at the denominator, 1 plus e, 3 minus x, all squared, this is always bigger than 0 for all x. So this means f of x is always bigger than or equal to 0 for all x. So that verifies the first condition. The second condition, we have to prove that the integral from negative infinity to infinity, f of x dx, we have to prove this is 1. That's where we're going to do a lot of work. So how do we going to do this? Negative infinity to infinity, the function was e to the 3 minus x, 1 plus e 3 minus x squared dx. Um, so first, we need to split this negative infinity to 0, as we did before in the improper integrals, and then 0 to infinity, e3 minus x over 1 plus e3 minus x squared dx. And then we do limit as a goes to negative infinity from a to 0. These steps are required in the solutions, 3 minus x squared dx plus limit as b goes to infinity, 0 to b, e3 minus x, 
1 plus e3 minus x squared dx. So now what I usually do, I integrate that one with no bounds on the side. It makes things easier instead of doing for each one separately. So we can do the integral on the side for, um, let's say I'm going to work it here. So to do that, we can do u sub for this. So du is going to be the negative e3 minus x dx. So the integral with no bounds is going to be negative on the top. So negative du over u squared. Negative out u, negative 2 du. u to the negative 1 over negative 1. So 1 over u. So now I know the integral for each one of them. So that was on the side. a goes to infinity is going to be 1 over u, which is 1 plus e3 minus x from a to 0, plus the limit as b goes to infinity, again, 1 over 1 plus e3 minus x from 0 to b. Plug the zero in, one over one plus e to the third power minus, plug the a in, three minus a, plus limit as b goes to infinity. Substitute the b in, one plus e, three minus b, minus, What are we going to get? 1 over 1 plus e cubed minus. When you pass e a to infinity, a to infinity, this will go to e to negative infinity, which is 0. So you're going to get 1 over 1 plus. Same thing here. This will go to 0. So you got 1 over 1 minus 1 over 1 plus e to the third. So a should be negative, negative here. So what happens in that case, when we put infinity there, that will make it e to the infinity, which is infinity. And the whole thing will go to 0 in that case. So this will be minus 0 because of the negative infinity. So these cancel each other, and we got 1. So we proved that the probability or the area below the curve from negative into infinity is exactly 1. Now, for part B, they ask us find the probability that x from 3 to 4. 3 to 4 is you go integral 3 to 4 the function that we have f of x dx this equals 3 to 4 the f of x is e3 minus x over 1 plus e3 minus x squared dx the good thing here we don't have to integrate it again because we already have done the integral in the previous part so when we integrated this it was 1 over 1 plus e to the 3 minus x from 3 to 4. Substitute the, the 4 in minus substitute the 3 in. Multiply here by e, top and bottom, you get that, minus 1. And you can combine them if you like, uh, minus 1 half. You can combine them or leave it as is, whatever is fine. So on the top of this, we learn about the mean, the mean, you know, mean, median, mode, 
So um, there's a lot into the mean and median mode, like when it's perfectly symmetric, the mean and median are all, both are the same. But we're not gonna go into the statistical part. We care about the calculus uh, part of it. So the mean is the mean for a probability density function for probability density function in general is defined by mu, this is a Greek letter mu, the integral from negative infinity to infinity x times the probability density function f of x. That's the mean. To see how to apply this, let f of x be given k times 3x minus x squared if x from 0 to 3 and f of x is 0 if x less than 0 or x bigger than 3. It's like a piecewise function. So part A, part A, for what value of k is f a probability density function. So we need to find a value of k that would make f of x a probability density function. We need two things. First for the k. So that works only when k is bigger than or equal to zero. Then if k be or equal to 0, then f of x, it will always give us, um, will be bigger than or equal to 0. Now, how about the integral? That's the fun part. The integral from negative infinity to infinity, uh, k times the 3x minus x squared dx. This must equal to what? 1. one. Yes, this must equal to 1. So now, remember, k is a constant. Right? K is a constant. And the lovely thing about this here, we are working from negative into infinity, but I don't have to do all of this. Because you only, everything is going to be zero everywhere except zero to three over that interval. So this is, I can only go from zero to three, k times three x minus x squared dx. Because if you want to go from three to infinity, let's say, if you want to write it down, down here, and you want to do the one before that, negative infinity to zero. So what's going to happen? This part is zero. This part is zero. It's given. Right? It's given in the, in the main definition here. They said, hey, f x is going to be zero. So this is zero. This is zero. So you only worry about the integral from 0 to 3. So how do you integrate that? Pull the k out. 3x squared over 2 minus x cubed over 3 from 0 to 3. And that should equal to 1. Then substitute the 3 in. That would be 9, 27 over 2 minus 27 over 3. And if you plug the zero in, that's gonna be zero. When we solve for k, from here, we're gonna get six over 27, which reduces down to two over nine. So for part B, for the obtained value of k, find the probability that x bigger than 1. So we found the k value. And remember, the, now the f of x is k, which is 2 over 9 times 3x minus x squared. So the probability that x bigger than 1 is going to be 1 to infinity of 2 over 9, 3x minus x squared dx.
and again we need to do improper integrals you can pull the two ninths out limit as a goes to infinity from 1 to a 3x minus x squared dx 2 ninths limit as a goes to infinity 3x squared over 2 minus x cubed over 3 from 1 to a now at this point you you can say wait why am I going from 1 to infinity right yes 1 to infinity is the right setup 1 to a is good but then at some point you say I don't have to do the infinity part because anything after 3 is going to be 0, right? The function is 0. So all we can do is, instead of doing all the way to infinity, we can just go from 1 to 3, uh, 2 ninths out, 3x minus x squared. That makes it easy. I don't have to use improper integrals because the function is defined only from 1 to 3, uh, 0 to 3. But since we started at 1, we're going to go 1 to 3. Anything after 3, the function is 0. So you, you're integrating 0 dx, which is 0. So then this is 2 ninths, 3x squared over 2 minus x cubed over 3 from 1 to 3. Assuming everyone can integrate this, you would get 20. You evaluate this, you get 20 over 27. Part C, find the mean. Find the mean for the probability density function that is given. So to find the mean, we defined the mean earlier with mu equals the integral from negative infinity to infinity x f of x dx. So that would be, uh, we have the function, the two nines I took it out, x times the 3x minus x squared dx. Again, we don't have to go from negative infinity to infinity. We can just go from 0 to 3, which is much easier to do it this way. Then we keep the 2 ninths out. You multiply inside 3x squared minus x cubed dx. And then integrate 2 ninths 3x cubed over 3 minus x to the fourth over 4 from 0 to 3. And then when you calculate all of this, these cancel out, you will get 3 halves. So what does this number mean here? Um, let me show you something. So let's look at um, that function that we have, y equals uh, the 2 ninths, 3x minus x squared. So if you multiply this out, you get this plus two times, that's a two-thirds x, two-thirds x. So this is a parabola, right? A parabola that opens downward. And the parabola has a vertex, if you remember from algebra. To find the vertex, we use the formula x equals negative b over 2a. So negative b is two-thirds over 2a, like that. So the negatives cancel. So you get 2 over 3 divided by 4 over 9. So you get 2 times 9, 3 times 4, reduce as much as you can. We get 3 halves, right? So when we draw the graph for that function, when we draw it, over 0 to 3, it's going to go like that, 0 to 3. And the vertex, it's at 3 halves like there somewhere there that's the vertex halfway through so notice when we found the mean where did the mean go what did we get for the mean that's the mean three halves so the mean is exactly here in the middle that tells us that the area to the left of the mean and to the right of the mean these areas are equal right so now what we can get out of this, we say that the median, the median of a probability, probability density function, density function, call it M. So 
the median m of a probability density function so the median of the probability density function is m is m such that such that the integral when you go from negative infinity to that m of that function is the same as if you go from m to infinity of that function and each one of them is one half because remember the total number or the total area under the probability density function should be one so if you're going from negative infinity to m and m to infinity each one should give us one half We can look at an example here beside the, probab the hyperbola one. Let's say we have this graph and we can ask a question, is, is the graph of the function, is the graph a probability density function one? PDF means probability density function. Does it represent a probability density function or not? Well, again, two things we need to do. First, we should state that this is the graph, call it F, call this F. So notice it's above or touching the X axis. So we can say it's bigger than or equal zero for all X. And also the area under the curve from negative infinity to infinity should be one but let's see I only see the area from the area here under the curve this one the shaded region which goes from 0 to 10 of that function dx but I don't have didn't give me the equation of the function how am I gonna integrate that oh I can integrate that so but then I, I noticed this is a triangle right so we can use one half base times height formula the base of the triangle from 0 to 10 is 10 units and the height is this height this is the height which is 0 0.2 0 0.2 so in this case if you multiply 10 by 0 0.2 you get 2 so it's 1 so the two conditions are met okay are met now, if I want to find for the same function, if I want to find the mean, uh, find the median, let's say, mean or median is going to be the same here, the median. So, we told you the median M, so what is M? We defined it as the integral from negative infinity to m f of x dx equals one half, or the integral from m to infinity of f of x dx is also one half. So we're gonna find the value of m. We're gonna find the value of m. So how do you find the value of m? Let's say, let's say I'm gonna use the second integral. You can use either one of them. Let's say I'm gonna use this. So I don't know where m is, but it's not going to go to infinity. It's going to go at most to 10. So to 10, f of x dx is 1 half. Now, when we go from m to 10, what's going to happen here? Um, we need to find out a way around this. Like, 
if I'm going M to 10, I don't have the function, but is there a way to find the function for that path? So what we're gonna do here is, if we look back at the graph, watch. So one thing to note, this, this line here, uh, it goes through two points. 0, 0 and 6 comma 0 0.2 so I can find the equation of that straight line see we can we can find the equation of the straight line so if I go down here I have 6 comma 0 0.2 and the other point is the origin so you can find the slope using y2 minus y1 x2 minus x1 0 0.2 over 6 if you multiply 10 top and bottom and divide by 2, you get 1 over 30. That's the slope of that first line. So then the equation, all the equation of the lines passing through the origin is y equals mx. There's no plus b. So it's 1 30th x. That's the equation of that line. So again, I'm going to draw it here. So this line has this equation. If you want to find the equation of the other line, same thing. You take this point, 10, 0, and, and the other one, 6, 0, 0.2, which I'm not going to find it, but I will give you the equation is negative 1 over 20th x plus 1 half. So how does that help us now? Now, what we can do, we can go now from m to 6, where I can use the first equation, 1 over 30th x dx, and then we can go from 6 to 10, where I can use the second equation, dx, and all of this should equal to one half. It's a lot of work, so we can pull the one over 30th out, integrate this from m to six, plus pull this out, x squared over two, plus one half x from six to 10 equals one half. And then you're gonna substitute the six in minus the m in and then after you substitute all of this you're going to get m squared to be 30 so m is going to be the square root of 30 only the plus case because we are working over 0 to 10. suppose that the probability density function for the wait time in line at a counter is given by the function f of x equals 0 if x less than 0 k e to the negative x over 5 if x bigger than or equal to 0 part a for this what is the value of k? So notice, they didn't say find the value of k if it's a probability. But they already give it to you that this is a probability density function. So it has to satisfy the two conditions, bigger than or equal to 0 and the integral is 1. So what we're going to do here is we're going to start by finding the integral from negative into infinity for that function dx. And notice it says if you go below zero, below zero, it's going to be always zero when x less than zero. So what we're going to do with this is this is going to go only from zero to infinity of ke negative x over 5 dx. And every time we work with improper integrals, we have to rewrite this using limits. So this equals the limit as a approaches infinity, 0 to A, Ke negative x over 5 dx. This shouldn't be difficult to integrate using the u sub as negative x over 5, so du is negative 1 fifth dx. And so if we try to integrate this, you can integrate it on the side. multiply by negative one-fifth and out by negative five. So you got a negative five there. 
So we're going to get negative 5k e negative x over 5 from 0 to a. Limit as a goes to infinity e negative a over 5 plus 5k. And when you pass the infinity in, this will go to 0. And this should equal to 1. So the 5k is 1, k is 5, 1 fifth. Let's add another part to it, b. Find or determine the probability. that a person will wait at least in line, at least three minutes. We can actually calculate that. So to find the probability, basically it's going to be the integral at least three, it means three to infinity f of x dx. Again, we have to use a goes to infinity, 3 to infinity, and the function day, we, um, we can use the k, which is 1 fifth that we found, e negative x over 5 dx. Again, when you integrate this, it's going to be the 1 fifth out. You have to multiply by negative 5 as we did in the previous section, a uh, previous part, a goes to infinity from three to uh, three to a, three to a. These cancel out, and if you run through the limit process, uh, we have a negative out, e negative a over five minus e negative three over five, and that will give us negative e to a negative 3 over 5. What is the mean wait time? The mean wait time, so we define the mean to be the integral negative into infinity x f of x dx. But here we only work from zero to infinity for this specific function, x times f of x is one fifth e negative five x dx. You can take the one fifth out as a constant. Now to integrate this one, one way to do that is the integration by parts. So the integration by parts would be the u equals x, the du is dx, and dv is whatever is left. So v is negative 1 over 5. It's always the reciprocal of the exponent. When we integrate that, actually it's negative 5. So it's going to be negative, negative 5, right? See, look, when you integrate this, u is going to be that. So du is going to be negative 5 dx. So you need a negative 5 here and negative 1 fifth out. So that's why, that's where the negative 1 fifth came from. And when you do the uv minus the integral of v du, you're going to get negative 1 fifth xe negative 5x minus minus plus one fifth e negative five x dx. So this stays the same. Again, it's gonna be one over five times one fifth, so one over 25 e negative five x. So back to this one, we do limit as a goes to infinity <coughs> um, of the integral from zero to a x e negative 5 x dx then one fifth limit as a goes to infinity 
negative one fifth x e negative five x minus I'm copying the answer I got on the right side from zero to a. Now when you do all this work, you will get five. So at some point, when you pass the limit here, you might get indeterminate form. You need to bring that E negative 5x down and do L'Hopital's rule.